Hello everyone, my name is Laura Rezac and I'm the Associate Rector at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina. And I'm so glad to be with you today for our family faith formation. Let's start by getting ready. Now you might be at a table like, like I am today or sitting outside like I often like to do. Wherever you are, let's get ready to enter into the story for today. Go ahead and get into a comfortable seating position and we will take three calming breaths together. You ready? All right, close your eyes and inhale and exhale. Again, inhale and exhale. Last time, inhale and exhale, keeping your eyes closed, let us pray. Gracious God, today we give you thanks for mothers everywhere, mothers of all kinds, and we also give you thanks for the story of Jesus' beloved mother, Mary. In his name we pray, amen. All right, you can open your eyes and join me for our story here today. So you can probably tell from that prayer, today we're thinking about mothers. It is Mother's Day here in the, in the United States. And even though this is not formally part of our church calendar, it's always good to celebrate the mothers in our lives. Now I wanna be really clear families can look very different from one to another. Some families might have two mothers, or some families might have a mother and a father, or some families might have two fathers. Some families might have just a mother, and some families might have just a father. So when you, we think about Mother's Day, when we think about celebrating mothers, I'm not talking just about a person you could point to in your family and say, that's my mother. Although if you have that person, it's also really good to celebrate her, of course. There are other people in our lives who can be mothers to us. Maybe there's aunts or grandmothers or an older cousin maybe, older family member of some kind. There can be a neighbor or a teacher who can be a mother to you. And sometimes, you know, even fathers, sometimes even fathers can take on a role that might feel more like a mothering kind of role. Whoever the mothers are in your life, whoever they have been, I hope that you can take a moment to say thank you today. I also want to tell you a story about another very important mother we have in our faith. Her name was Mary she was the mother of Jesus. Now Mary's color is usually blue. Blue like the heavens. If you're looking at a, a picture in a church window and you see a woman wearing blue, usually that's a clue that it's, that it's going to be Mary. We use the color blue at one other time of year. Do you remember when the church uses blue? It's during Advent, right? Advent is when we are waiting for, for Jesus to be born, both in history and, and also born in our, in our hearts. Because Advent is very much about Mary, who was waiting for Jesus to be born. We use her color during Advent. So let's tell the story of Mary's life. There might be some things in her life that you might not know, that you might not be familiar with or recognize. It's important to tell her story on this day when we celebrate mothers because just as Mary was a mother to Jesus in life, she also can be a mother to us in spirit. So let's think about her story. When Mary was just a little girl, maybe your age, she often wondered what her life was going to be like. Years went by and she grew and grew, and then one day something happened 
that was really hard to explain. Can you see that? Here's Mary sitting on the bed, and here's light that's coming to visit her. This light was actually the angel Gabriel. Gabriel came to her and said, something wonderful is going to happen. You are going to have a baby, and that baby is going to change this was really hard for Mary to understand, especially because she didn't have a husband yet. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. He was a carpenter and he was a very good man. And she was a little worried about telling him what the angel had said. The angel also came to Joseph and told Joseph something very similar. Mary is going to have a baby and this baby is going to change everything. Mary and Joseph, they didn't understand these words exactly, but, but they decided to have faith. Now, you probably remember from our stories in Advent, but Mary did have a baby, and she named him Jesus. And while Jesus was growing up, many strange things continued to happen. She took him when he was just a baby, just a few days old, to the temple. And a man came up to her and said, Your baby is a miracle. I have seen the Messiah. It was very hard for Mary to understand. And then when her son was about 12, he went missing for a time. And she and Joseph searched everywhere for him, and they found him in the temple. And when they said, oh, Jesus, we were so worried, we were so scared, we couldn't find you, Jesus said, you should have known I was in my father's house. This was very hard for Mary and Joseph to understand because their house was far away. How was the temple Jesus' father's house? It was hard to understand, but Mary had faith. One day, when Jesus had grown up and become a man, he began to teach. He taught in the synagogues. He taught that he was coming to make something new. That he was someone who could change everything. And in addition to teaching, he also did signs, he did miracles. Here's Jesus and his mother at one miracle when Jesus turned water into wine. This was a confusing thing. It was a strange thing. But Mary had faith. Now on his travels while Jesus was teaching, one day he decided to go to Jerusalem. And he knew that it would be for the last time. When he was in Jerusalem, he was arrested, and he was put on a cross. And Mary was there at the foot of the cross, and she looked up, and she saw her son. And Jesus looked down from the cross and saw his mother, and he wanted to take care of his mother. So he said to one of his disciples, one of his friends who was standing there, he said, Behold your mother, meaning to this disciple that Mary was now going to be like a mother to that disciple. And he said to Mary, Behold your son, meaning that she should now consider this disciple her son. Even when Jesus was dying on the cross, he wanted to take care of his mother. After Jesus died on the cross, he was taken down, and tradition says that he was put in the lap of his mother. There's many paintings that depict this, that depict Mary holding Jesus when he was taken down from the cross. It's called the Pieta, this kind of painting, and it's because Mary's face looks so sad. The next few days were really hard for Mary. She had lost her beloved son. 
And then on the third day, she went with some other women to Jesus' tomb where he had been laying to try to pray and to try to have some burial rituals that would make her feel better and would honor her son. But when they got there, they found that the tomb was empty. The stone had been rolled away. Jesus wasn't there anymore. Somehow Jesus was with them, alive, in a way that he still is today, with us. It was hard for, for Mary, the mother Mary, and the disciples to understand what had happened. Several days later, after they found the empty tomb, Mary was with the disciples in a room when all of a sudden, the sound of a mighty wind filled the room and the Holy Spirit came like fire and hovered above the heads of Mary and the other disciples. Jesus had sent the Holy Spirit to them to help them no longer be afraid. No one knows what happened to Mary after that. No one knows how she died or where she died or where she was buried. But you know, people still feel close to her as Jesus' mother. People name churches after her. And they make pilgrimage to places where they feel especially close to her. Her story is still happening. Her story still continues. Since this story never ends, we're going to put down some of Mary's flowers here. These flowers are called forget-me-nots. They're the color of Mary, aren't they? They're Mary's blue color. And their name, Forget-Me-Not, means that her story will never be forgotten. I wonder which part of Mary's story you like best. Let's move it like this so you can see it all. This is when the angel came to Mary. This is when Mary had her son Jesus and raised him with faith and with love. This is when Mary was with Jesus as he taught in the temple and as he did miracles throughout the countryside. This is Mary when Jesus was taken down from the cross, when she held him and loved him. This is the empty tomb that Mary and the other women found on Easter morning. This is when the Holy Spirit came like a fire to be with Mary and the other disciples. And this reminds us that her story still continues. I wonder which part of the story you like best. I wonder which part is most important. I wonder if we can leave out any part of this story and still have everything we need. I wonder how you are going to celebrate the mothers in your life today. I wonder how you are going to say a big thank you to the mothers in your life today. And if you can't think of anyone, you can say a big thank you to the Mother Mary. Be well, friends. Stay safe. Wear your mask. I'll see you next time.